So we're going to talk about different types of gamma cameras and that will flow into how the camera operates. So this is a, an old um, GE, it's about 30 years old. So it's the one at Charles Sturt University. And these were state of the art in their day. Um, you can see that uh, it takes up quite a bit of floor plan. So you've actually got a table or a bed that the patient would lie on and that would then rotate or sorry, move in through the gantry of the gamma camera itself. The gamma camera obviously sits out on an arm and part of that um, creates a problem because you end up with uh, decreased stability. So uh, if I come over to the to the system here and give it a little bit of a push, you'll actually see it rock back and forward. So it's actually out on an arm and gravity has its, uh, its impact. It does have a counterweight on the back. So you can see here, this is a counterweight sitting on the back. Um, but nonetheless is that it uh, has a degree of instability. These were fantastic for, for doing static images where we actually just image in one position at a time. Um, these were some of the first gamma cameras that we used for SPECT as well, and we'll talk about SPECT in a, in a separate video. Um, but essentially, uh, having this camera rotate around the patient, so uh, a position here, taking a picture, and then rotating around and taking a picture at different angles as it comes around the patient. And the problem with that is, is that when it sits out on an arm, it needs to have some physical character or um, stability. So you can see that my alignment is very manual. So here I'm actually lining up my angles. It's got an electromagnetic braking. Uh, so down here I could actually uh, flip this off and rotate the camera left and right. And that would allow me to do patient sitting up. So it's very versatile, but it means that I'm actually relying on my physical alignment um, to ensure that I'm in the right spot um, for spec. Otherwise you end up with rotation errors. And of course sitting right on the top is a little spirit level that you would use to ensure that the actual gamma camera was flat before it did its rotation or you'll end up with reconstruction errors. So all those mechanical kinds of things created some uncertainty in the spec reconstruction. So by using a circular field of view, you've actually only got a, um, a limited field of view. So you can see here that uh, I've actually just drawn on there a couple of kidneys and that worked out quite fine for the, for the kidneys drawn in blue there. Um, but you'd have to position it with that round field of view is if you're slightly high or low then it'd be very easy for the kidney or the kidneys were slightly laterally positioned or you might have a higher or a lower kidney like a pelvic kidney then all of a sudden it'd be very easy where the, the actual field of view cuts in for part of that kidney to be outside the field of view. It's also important that you know when we're doing our abdominal imaging for example for a GLT blood loss study so these uh, lines in purple so this would be the, the rectum, but you could very easily end up with the hepatic and over this side the splenic flexure falling outside the field of view. So it wasn't ideal and your positioning had to be a lot better. Now this is actually called a um, 40 um, centimetre field of view. So um, it's, a, it's a 40 centimetre field of view, it gives you a really good um, I guess size, but you can't fit an entire body width wise, you couldn't get shoulders in, you'd have to position shoulders across the middle, pelvis, it would be hard to get in. There's smaller versions of these, the 30 centimetre field of use, the same round system um, we use for paediatrics, and then you can get slightly bigger versions which were 500 centimetre field of use or 50 centimetre field of use, 500 millimetres, is that, uh, and they were used for whole body imaging. So they're actually pretty good and very versatile in their day. Um, the next version of these actually had rectangular fields of view, so about 40 centimetres by 50 centimetres, and the rectangular field of view allows for much better whole body. As I said, the limitation remains this sitting out on an arm, giving this variable gantry security or um, um, stability, which would affect your spec studies. But these systems are actually pretty good systems. The next generation of gamma cameras, typified here by this uh, picker system, and this was actually uh, quite common across uh, the globe, um, is that we've all of a sudden got um, gantry security. So our gamma camera, as you can see here, um, this is a single head system. So this single head system is sitting in a, a bigger gantry and that gantry gives it a lot more stability than the old GE systems where the actual or similar systems where the gantry um, was an arm that had the very heavy detector head sitting out on the end. So this gives it a lot of stability. This also is characteristic of a small floor plan. So this is actually very efficient. So the bed stays in the same position. The bed doesn't move, but you can see some tracks along the ground there. And this gamma camera rolls down across the bed to produce a whole body scan. 
So it means it actually takes up a very small footprint. Um, that's not typical of newer scanners today, which I'll show you shortly. Um, but, uh, but this is actually one that was actually on the market. Uh, it also came with a two-headed system. So, um, so you can see that you've got one detector head here. And another detector system would sit in there. And uh, that would be a two-headed system. And you can also have it with a, the same camera would have a triple-headed system. Um, and so this is much better for spec. You can also do planar, where you're just imaging one position. And that four, that's a rectangular um, field of view. So you can see it's got a rectangular field of view that's uh, a bit over 40 centimeters by a bit under 40 centimeters. Um, allows for a fairly good uh, field of view. So you don't have those issues of cutting off kidneys or um, parts of the colon or um, shoulders or hips. Those sorts of things fit in quite nicely on the average person. Um, even when it actually scans down the patient's body. But the other advantage is having this gantry system gives the actual detector head a lot more stability and it means that when you're actually doing your spec studies where this camera is rotating around the patient, taking images every couple of degrees, and it means that you actually have a much more stable system. So this is the next generation after the, the picker. So this is a Siemens eCam system. You can see that uh, as opposed to the picker system we had out at CSU, that there's two detectors, one above and below the bed. A slightly different configuration here is that the actual bed now moves through the gantry. So this is actually still a fairly compact footprint. Um, you can see that it doesn't go all the way through. The, the wall's actually fairly close, so it'll go all the way through there. But the detectors are set up on the front end of the gantry, so the bed doesn't have to go too far through. So, uh, so two, two heads, one on the top, one on the bottom, and the bed moving through. We've got this solid gantry so that it rotates for spec without any uh, uh, issues with the, the head out on, a, on our arm. Now you can see that the head is on this uh, arm, but uh, it's actually a lot more solid. It's actually part of a single gantry rather than actually out on an arm that wobbles around like the old GE system. The next system after this, which I'll actually just do a quick picture of, um, so it'll follow this um, video, um, actually has a, um, it's a GE um, uh, system that um, is called a um, Hawkeye and around about this location here it actually has an x-ray tube that goes over to the other side where there's a detector and it's a rotating low resolution x-ray system that um, that allows uh, low resolution CT for attenuation correction and um, and localization so that's the next generation after this and I'll, I'll show you a picture of it and then we'll, we'll move through to um, to the higher end spec CT. And this is the next generation, so after the GE Hawkeye system uh, came out with the low resolution CT, so the rotating x-ray tube for the CT that I just described and showed a picture of, um, this is a GE Discovery and what it actually has is you can see the two gamma cameras, so there's two detectors um, as part of the gamma camera. This is in an L configuration uh, and the reason we put it in an L configuration, they can actually be opposed like the Siemens eCam I just showed you. But in the L configuration, we actually use it for cardiac scanning because the heart is at the front left of the body. So we actually only do data collection from half the patient's body. So it makes it a little bit quicker. So you can see it's actually quite a big bulky system. And the reason it's a big bulky system is that it actually has this um, uh, gamma camera at the front. So the two headed gamma camera at the front on a really stable um, gantry for spec. And then the rest of it is actually CT. So this is a high resolution multi slice CT. So um, typically gamma cameras will come out with 8, 16, 32, 64, up to 128 slice CT. So that's the, uh, the ball that goes through and you can see the CT uh, ring inside of that. So um, as a result, it's actually quite a big system. And so fitting diagonally in this room, um, because the bed has to go through the system, and it doesn't just go through the gamma camera, but it then has to go through the CT scanner, so out the other side. So it needs quite a bit of space um, to fit into the room. So that's the, uh, the latest generation of um, spec systems, so they're full spec diagnostic CT.